Hi everyone, Sif Alchemist here. Today I want to talk about the story of the golem. What is the golem? This is something that I've been wanting to share with you for so long and I think it's the right time to do it. What is the golem and what is its relationship to other stories around the world? I've connected some dots and I wanted to share them with you. So Golem has been, or the Golem, has been mentioned in many religious texts around the world. And especially texts from Judaism. In Judaism, and especially in Kabbalistic texts in the Kabbalah, there is a very important book. It is said that it's the most important book of the Kabbalah. And it's called the Sefer Yetzora. Sefer Yetzora. And this book states, it is actually believed that this book was written by Abraham himself. And it states different uh, techniques or different methods of um, making a golem and making the golem come to life. So what is a golem? A golem is a clay figure. It's a clay figure that one or a magician or a gifted person can build from clay or from earth and can animate. The clay figure becomes animated through uttering certain magical words. You utter some magical words, you do some kind of uh, ritual and then the clay figure becomes alive, just like a human being. And it is said that this clay figure, the golem, can be your servant. It can do anything for you, anything you want. Cook, uh, clean, food, um, basically build things for you. It can do anything for you. It's, it's literally like a modern day robot, except the fact that there's technology involved without technology. It's using magic, it's using clay and magic. The Sefer Yetzirah, the book, it is said that the person who can decipher the Sefer Yetzirah in the, in the Kabbalah, the person who can decipher the book can give life to a golem, can build a golem and give life to it. It is even said in, in the Kabbalah, it is believed that uh, Abraham and his followers at some point, I think when they were running away, um, they were reaching starvation, they didn't have any food, they didn't have anything to eat. So Abraham built a golem through what's written in the Sefer Yetzirah, since, since Abraham is the one who wrote the Sefer Yetzirah. There is no proof about that, but it is believed so by, by uh, people who practice the Kabbalah and the uh, 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 Judaism, and specifically the Kabbalah. And it is believed that uh, Abraham built golems and put life into them, he made them alive. And these golems are the ones who gave them food. They, they basically cooked food for them. How? It's not mentioned, but it's a story that is, uh, that is widely known. So this is a very interesting story, but where do I find similarities across other cultures, across other places around the world? This is what's fascinating, because sure, the story of the golem is interesting, sure. It's something that you can, it's a clay figure that you can animate and it does things for you. But other cultures mention that too. And that's fascinating. Another culture that, that had this kind of association is the birth of the Hindu god Ganesha or Ganesh. He's portrayed in India, in uh, Bali, Indonesia, in many countries many hindu countries of the of the east as this kid who have an elephant head ganesha or ganesh how was he born he was born basically uh this is how the story goes according to hindu tradition shiva's wife lord shiva one of the main gods in hinduism shiva his wife he had a wife and Shiva used to live for long periods of time. He would leave and no one knew where he would go because he was a god. He would leave for long periods of time, him and his followers, they would just leave. And he had this wife that he was very fond of. He loved her so much and he left her for many years. She was just by herself, uh, but he would come to see her every now and then. 
but this time he was gone for too long so his wife uh, became very uh, uh, lonely basically and she wanted company and she said because she was also she knew magic she was gifted she was also basically uh, sh she knew the, the, the craft so she, tradition says that she built a clay of a figure clay like basically a figure made out of earth and she blew on it or she put life to it through her magic and then the figure became animated it became a little boy so this is another correlation with the story of the golem of judaism uh, in judaism in the kabbalah in the abrahamic tradition except that in the abrahamic tradition in the kabbalah they call it the golem but in the east they don't call it the golem but the always the details are very important when i learned that that's how ganesha or ganesh were created i was shocked i'm like this is basically a golem shiva's wife or shiva's lover created a golem literally because it's kind of the same method you create a clay figure from earth and you do some magic and you put life into it and uh at first it didn't have an elephant head it had it had a human head and this little boy was guarding her until Shiva arrived one day and he was gone for too long but he arrived the little boy her the golem that she that she built was guarding her while she was taking a bath the boy wanted to protect his mom but he didn't know Shiva he didn't know of Shiva her husband so when Shiva came he said who are you and then the little boy was uh, was a little bit arrogant and he told him who are you you can't come here and Shiva being a god and a very powerful god. Shiva is one of those dark gods that are very powerful. I have a lot of, a lot of uh, respect for Shiva. Uh, uh, and Shiva just cut off his head right away without saying a word. He's like, who are you to tell me that I'm here to see my, my wife? I'm, I'm the ultimate god. So he cut off his head. Shiva's wife came out, she was freaking out because she developed emotions for her kid, for the golem. It's basically her kid. Shiva was didn't know what to do. She's like, you have to bring him to life. And apparently the, the, the real story, how it happened is that one of his followers, Shiva's followers, they were these, um, uh, they were uh, like, 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 there's a lot of scriptures that describe them as non-human looking they looked like creatures they looked like like aliens they looked like de demons different beings they were not humans the, the this group that used to follow shiva all the time and uh he basically by agreement with one of his of his followers one of his followers had the head with this kind of thing that's 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 hanging from the face because so, it's let's say it's a creature it's another being it's not human and because back then humans didn't know what to label it because it was a different species of of uh, of entity they said elephant but it was not an elephant so shiva basically by agreement with one of his followers because they're magical beings they, we 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 don't understand that realm shiva took the head of that being and replaced it on top of the head uh, of the golem of Shiva's wife's that, that boy because he told her that it's not possible for me to bring his head back. The only way to bring him to life is to put this other head of the being on top of the boy. And this being had this, it was kind of a creature and it had this kind of long nose that looked like uh, the elephant's, you know, the elephant nose. So that's a detail that's not really important for this story. But that's how Ganesha became Ganesha and people said he had an elephant's head, but it was not really an elephant. But Ganesha was actually a golem. If we check on how he was created, that's one, that's one story that correlates with the story of the golem. What's another story? In, um, in another religion, in the Islamic religion, I believe, and I'm not sure about Christianity, but maybe Christianity as well. Uh, it is said that God 
created Adam and Eve from clay as clay figures. I believe that in Islam, the Quran, uh, the Quranic tradition, I believe states that God created Adam and Eve from clay as clay figures. Adam, not Eve, Adam, created Adam as a clay figure and then put life into it. That's also a golem. It's very similar. It's like you create a clay figure from earth and that's why it is said that our bodies come from earth and they will go back to earth. And then puts life into it and then Adam became Adam. That the Adam, the, the relig from, from all the religious books. That's in the Islamic tradition. I believe in Christianity there's something similar as well. Another mention of the golem is in ancient Egypt. The Egyptians believe that when you go to the afterlife, when you die and you go to the afterlife, you, uh, uh, you live with the gods and the gods give you these lands, these kind of farmlands where you can harvest your food. And if you don't want to do the work yourself, you're given these clay figures that do the work for you, that harvest and work the land so you can get some food from the land. Here again, we have the mention of clay figures that do the work for you. There's just so many mentions of these clay figures all over the place. These clay figures that get this they get animated, they get this energy into them and they become alive. But here's the thing with these clay figures. It is said that in the beginning, they seem soulless. They are, they, they, it, it's, it is said that when, when, they're, when, they be, when they come to life, they're alive. They can seem like a perfect human being. But there's, they, it, when you start talking to them, when you start asking them questions, they look like they're soulless, they look like they're blank. But then eventually they start learning, eventually they learn more and more and more and more, and then they become more uh, uh, alive or more uh, soulful, if you will. So because their origin, their purpose is just, is just to uh, execute orders from whoever created them, whoever creates them, gives them the orders and they do it and that's it. But I believe that the golem can develop a soul and develop, you know, that's why uh, for the story of Ganesha, the little boy wanted to protect his mom because he believed that's his mom. So maybe they can become very human-like with a soul. And um, I want to correlate this with um, with the story of uh, with the uh, with the story in alchemy in alchemy there's there's paracelsus paracelsus is one of the most prominent famous alchemists that have ever existed uh, paracelsus uh, his name is uh, i think paracelsus von Deichen hohenheim something like this he's one of my favorite alchemists and he created him many through alchemy he invented many uh, medicines many many cures and he claims, Paracelsus claims that he created an artificial being that he calls a homunculus or homunculi. The homunculus that he created, it, it, he's, he claimed that it can be created in a laboratory, in a jar, in basically this jar where you create this tiny human being. And this tiny human being can move, can be animated here again reminds me of the story of the golem it reminds me of the golem these tiny humans or human looking figures that can move just like human beings so paracelsus claims that he was able to create a homunculus and i think that the total of homunculus is homunculi i think if i'm correct but uh, if you check Paracelsus and homunculus, Paracelsus claims that he was able to create a homunculus. And uh, the criteria of this homunculus is that it's a, a small human being. I think, that, I think this big, about maybe 25 centimeters high, and it's very small and it can move, but it doesn't live for too long. So something within this, these lines. And in alchemy, there's the three core, uh, uh, main elements of alchemy, which is 
corpus animus spiritus, which are the elements of salt, sulfur, and uh, 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 the spirit is represented by mercury. So salt, sulfur, and mercury. These three elements, uh, uh, these three elements, sorry, these three ele elements, corpus, body, right? Salt, body, animus. Animus is not mine. A lot of people think of it as the mind. Animus is the divine masculine energy that animates us. And it's from Latin. Hence why animus, animate. So the body, corpus, the body gets animated by the animus, the divine masculine energy. And then the third one is spiritus, mercury, the divine feminine. Spirit is, is the spirit that inhabits everything. So what if the golem, when you build it as a clay figure, is the body, and then the energy that animates the body is the animus, as per what alchemy is saying, and then that's the divine masculine, and then the spirit is the divine feminine, is what gives it life. And what if these three elements, the Holy Trinity, the real Trinity, not the religious one, the real one, the real Trinity, is what gives this uh, golem life. Maybe this Trinity is the secret key to life, to actually giving life to something and becoming godlike. This is truly fascinating. Um, but it is uh, in many, uh, in all of these stories that I mentioned, there is a mention of magic. It's not like you build the golem and it becomes alive. There's a certain ritual and magic that goes hand in hand so the clay figure becomes animated. And that magic, it's not known. It's not public. Some people know it, but it's not public knowledge because it's dangerous. Because you can have godlike abilities, you can create life. Um, I've read in some mysterious books that I myself don't remember the title. You know, sometimes when the universe puts on your way some mysterious books and you read them and you don't even remember where you read them or how you found them. Something like that happened to me before. And I've read some crazy things about the golems, about how some people about how this tradition dates back to the Anunnaki race, who were the first settlers on Earth, the, the gods. And they used to create golems everywhere. And they had this knowledge. And many descendants of the Anunnaki still have this knowledge up to this modern day. And they can create these golems. They can create these, these figures that look like exactly like human beings. And they can do anything you want. I've read that they can do building, like they can basically build a five-story building within an overnight. Overnight, they can build a five-story building. Because they have, these golems are magical beings. They can, they have magical powers and they use magic to fulfill anything, to manifest anything. So they can basically manifest anything you want. If you can create one, of course. So I've read these crazy things about the golems and about how these um, Anunnaki and some descendants of the Anunnaki have this knowledge and they still use them. And I want to bring your attention about this happened sometimes in my life. And I wonder if it happened to you as well, where you meet some people sometime that seem soulless. They seem like they're alive. They're like human beings, of course but they don't have this notion of the soul, of the spiritus element, the spirit, the mercury. They don't ha it seems like they don't have a spirit. It seems like they're just robots. I'm sure you've met some of these people because I've met them and it's a weird feeling, especially for the gifted people like yourself, like us practitioners, we feel these things. We know the people who are very, powerful who have crazy energy and we also know when someone doesn't have an energy you can sense that very easily but have you ever met a human being that seems like it doesn't have a soul 
even though they're alive. So that's fascinating and that's, uh, that is something I've been wanting to share with you for, for so long because throughout my research, many of these dots were connecting and uh, this tradition, this golem tradition, exists all across uh, civilizations around the world. You can find it in different texts, in different religions, in different traditions. And um, I just wanted to bring your attention to it. Have you ever heard of this? Have you ever seen a golem? <laughs> I am not sure. <laughs> anyway, I hope this was helpful in any shape or form. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this subject and if you believe it exists or whatever you think. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.